What's up, dudes? It's Molly. I just woke up. <laughs> uh, somebody may take someone out to eat. Someone may cook for someone. Mm -hmm. This is the person who shared the recipe. Alright. So, guys, yeah. Uh, I hear. I'm gonna make some coffee while I'm at Oh, here we go. Hold my hand. We're going through the dark part. I know the way. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we have uh, somebody here who's learned the lesson. Yeah, okay, I hear stuck up, bitch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this person may have behaved like a stuck up bitch. Oh, we got two people. Okay. We got Goofus and Gallant. Okay. One person who uh, maybe enlightened. This is somebody who uh, okay. Yeah. South America might mean something. Chile may mean something. I have Buenos Aires. Okay, Argentina might mean something. I have the Panama Canal. Okay. Um. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking about right now when I um, um I used to know these dog mushers. Um. They lived in northern Minnesota. Uh, and then they ended up moving to Alaska. Uh, there wasn't enough snow in Minnesota, they thought at the time. And they wanted to, <laughs> yeah, they were getting pulled further north. Yes. And, uh, yeah, the name Carrie may mean something, or Stuart. Yeah, old friends that I knew a long, long time ago. I, uh... I went on to Alaska and stayed with them one summer, and uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. It was, uh, yeah, the first night, uh, they lived in a house that didn't have any running water, uh, no bathroom, they had an outhouse, yeah, and so that night, I was like, oh, well, yeah, I have, like, I pee. I'm the world's smallest bladder. <laughs> I have to be like, at least once in the middle of the night. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to bed. Mm -hmm. I hear House of the Rising Sun. I just heard House of the Rising Sun. Okay. And I thought, I better bring a flashlight when I go to bed in case I have to pick, get up and go to the outhouse. And I was kind of scared. Oh, I'm looking at the bee, a beehive might mean something. Looking at the honey pot right here. Right there. Yeah, see it? Balik China Island might mean something. So, yeah, so I brought a flashlight with me and went to bed. Woke up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Oh, gotta go. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Walk. Yeah. Uh, it was the time of year where. Uh, the sun shines the whole time, yeah. So it doesn't get dark, I didn't need a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, the darkest it got at the time was uh, like dusky, like dusky, dusk kind of, or a twilight kind of light, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm, my friends saying, and these were these were uh, friends that I had that were older than me. I, yeah, I. That's when I started. Just kind of, I was younger. I was in my twenties, and I had just started hanging out with people older than me. I love hanging out with people older than me. Uh, you get a lot of really cool life lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, and Stuart said we're in bear country. 
we got to shoot, we're, we're going to shoot the big gun. And so we all went out back. Mm -hmm. He got this big pistol gun. I don't know. I hear 44. I don't know anything about guns. It was a big, it was like, whoa. Yeah, it was a bear gun, you know. And Stu said, does anyone want to shoot it? And it was, uh, I was like, oh my God, I've only shot, I shot a 22 caliber uh, gun once at uh, at a Target uh, in someone's backyard once. Uh, I actually kind of like Target shooting. I'm not a huge gun enthusiast. Uh, um, but that was that was fun. I was pretty good at it. I didn't know that. But this gun was like, whoa, I don't know. And everybody was kind of freaked out about it and Stuart, Stuart shot the gun. And oh my God, it was boom. Yeah. All right. S yeah. Now I see a bunch of runners running on a, on a racetrack. Mm-hmm. A bunch of people's spirit guides may have shot a gun. Mm -hmm. Said race is on, dudes. Yeah. Okay. I heard the huskies are howling at the moon. Oh. Yeah, so, um, the woman, my friend, Carrie, she uh, would make food from scratch. So since they had no uh, electricity, they had no running water, she would have like big buckets, like big buckets of flour, big buckets of a grease. She had a big bucket of grease. I remember. Uh, I, I, she just called it the grease. I don't know what it was. Yeah, and she would cook you food from scratch. Yeah, I remember. Mhm. Mm I'd driven out to Alaska from Minnesota with an old boyfriend. Yeah, and we brought a bunch of ravioli. Might mean something. We brought a bunch of Chef Boy ID ravioli <laughs> with us. Because uh, we were kind of like camping on, along the way to Alaska. And we took our time getting out there. Mm -hmm. I hear hot springs. Yeah. A hot springs might mean something. Somebody may go to a sulfur spring. Yeah. All my jewelry turned black. <laughs> yeah. We stopped off at a sulfur spring in Canada on the way. Yeah. Jumped in. Came out smelling like rotten eggs and all my silver jewelry was black. It was crazy. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Carrie was an excellent cook. Uh, mm -hmm. Fry bread. Fry bread might mean something. All right. So we have this stuck up bitch who wouldn't share their recipe. Yeah. Carrie got this red fry bread recipe. She was friends with a Native American person uh, back in the 70s. And uh, her Native American friend taught her all like um, some traditional Native American things and taught her how to make fry bread. All right. And it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. Yeah. And, uh-huh. And... Yeah, it's one of those things, too, where you're getting delicious food after a long, hard day of work, a long, hard day of taking care of dogs, a long, hard day, yeah. All right. So, yeah, so... We have a stuck-up bitch who would not share the recipe. No, it's my secret recipe. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then the stuck-up bitch got struck down with karmic illness. Okay, got struck down with karmic illness and was too sick to cook for themselves. Yeah. But all their friends, I don't know what to do. He never shared the recipe of the food he liked to eat. How am I supposed to feed you when you're down and out? when you're stingy with the recipe. All right, somebody's learning their karmic lesson. It's a stuck up bitch. 
Uh -huh. Okay. I'm learning about, yeah, I'm learning about. Somebody may be discuss, uh -huh, discussing, okay. I hear the great potato, uh -huh, potato famine, potato, uh -huh, potato, uh -huh. a bidet might mean something, All right? The great potato famine. Mm -hmm. in Ireland. So we had all these people. Mm -hmm. If you ever go to Ireland, dude, yeah, make sure you really check out how... Now, I haven't been to Ireland in 23 years. It was in 2000 when I went to Ireland. But when you're driving around Ireland, you'll notice all these rock walls. Uh, Ireland, uh, a lot of times the land is very separated and you see like rock walls uh, along the road. You see all these rock walls. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to say, oh, yeah. oh, that's quaint. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I think one of those rocks mm -hmm, were dug out of the rocky, rocky unproductive ground. Mm -hmm. The ground was filled with rocks, but the soil in between was really good. Yeah. So every one of those rocks, you guys, came out of somebody's field that they toiled and worked to clear that field of all those rocks so they could use that land and make it something productive. One human being pulled out each of those rocks one by one mm -hmm. and marked off where their land was. This is the land that I am harvesting, okay? Harvesting. Yeah. And the great potato famine happened. Yeah, so a, a lot of Irish people, if you don't know about the great potato famine, uh, very poor people, mm -hmm. and there was a and and the Irish lived off potatoes. Yeah, it's what they could grow in that soil. Mm -hmm. But there, uh, yeah, that year there was like, a, uh, those years, yep, yeah, there was a crazy fungus that made all the potatoes rotten, and the staple food that these people survived off of. There are people, yeah, there are people who only ate potatoes. That's all they had. Yeah, was instantly cut off. And everybody started starving. They called it the bad times. Mm -hmm. News came to, to the United States, I hear Minnesota, okay. News came to the United States that there was a great potato famine happening in Ireland. That's when the Irish immigrants started uh, coming to the United States. They had nothing to lose. They were dropping. They were dying. They were starving out there. Mm -hmm. I hear the Atta girls. Mm -hmm. The Titanic may mean something. So, mm -hmm. So a Native American tribe here in uh, the United States, I hear Lakota. I'm not quite sure what tribe it was. Mm -hmm. I have a blog on it, I hear Sioux. I hear Shakopee Bidwankatin Sioux, okay. Uh, Mystic Lake Casino may mean something. Mm -hmm. uh, so back in the day, a Native American tribe from the United States heard about the Great Potato Famine happening in Ireland. And they gathered their resources and sent some money over to Ireland. Yeah. 
I think they were able to send a hundred and something dollars. These are people who knew what it felt like to starve themselves. Who knew the struggle themselves. And back in the time, mm -hmm, I hear hoop dance. Yep. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, dudes, there was no internet there was no nothing there was just word of mouth and this tribe heard that those people were starving and that beautiful gesture mm -hmm. we yeah we don't have a feast for you but we have some money in case you come across something you can buy What an amazing gesture. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm seeing uh, Dallas might mean something. Dallas, Texas might mean something. Yeah. I'm seeing the TED Talk. Yeah. About Native American hoop dancing in the circle of life. All right. Spirit's asking us all to watch that. It's a TED Talk, yeah, by a man named Dallas, where he talks about, uh, mm hmm I hear, why are we so separate? Why is there so much anger? I will feed you. Give me your recipe. I love you. Yeah, where he talks about taking care of your elders, being a helper, taking care of your community. Mm hmm If you're very, uh, very lively and enriching, enrich, uh, richy rich, enriching, mm. lively and enriching. So if this is resonating with you, darlings, yes, Spirit's asking you to watch that TED Talk. I will link it down in the comments. Yes, we can all learn something. Mm -hmm. Somebody may do the hula, the hula hoop. Mm -hmm. We can all learn something from Dallas. All right, darlings. Peace out. I love you. I hope you have a wonderful meal today, darling. Whatever it is you like to eat.